And he gets in the ring, and Paul's got his cell phone, and Paul's explaining to him that, oh, there was a big snowstorm in Saskatchewan, and, and Brock's not going to get here tonight. But you would have kicked his ass if you were here anyway. And so Roman's cutting this cocky promo, and then all of a sudden, Paul Heyman goes, oh, my God, he's here. And Roman and the, the Usos freak out, and they all rush backstage. And they, they try to escape. Yeah, they hop into this this vehicle, and literally right as they're going to commercial, Lesnar shows up in a forklift, and he drives this forklift and just smashes the... Uh, the windows. Well, whatever you used to lift with the forklift or the, the arms or whatever, right through the window of this car. And all of a sudden, it's like a pizza commercial or something. Because, like, who gives a shit that these guys are dead? we got to go to commercial. So yeah. they go to commercial, and they come back, and they're not dead. And uh, Brock's tipping the car over, and he's running wild, and they end up jumping into this other car, and and literally as they're leaving, they actually kind of half run over Brock Lesnar, and his body breaks the car door off the car, and this car door just falls on the ground, and they zoom off, and Lesnar actually kind of looked a little bit pissed because I don't I don't know if necessarily that was exactly what was supposed to happen because they pretty much hit him with that car to rip that door off. And then he takes the door down to the ring, and he just cuts a promo saying he's going to kill Roman Reigns. And I mean, it was it was like the old Stone Cold Steve Austin stuff. And it's 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 it's, it's stuff that works. People eat it up. Yeah, yeah, it's stuff that works. It was I mean, good. It's, it's it's goofy, but it, it's the stuff that works. So yeah, I mean, I think that they've done a a great job in building this match up and making it mean something. You know, like I mean, it's not. I mean, they tell you over and over again that it's the biggest match in the history of wrestling, and obviously it's not. And I don't know that anyone buys it, but I guess if they keep telling you it... At if some you point, keep telling people... Some are, some are going to believe it. Some portion of your audience is going to believe this is bigger than Hogan and Andre. Yeah. Bigger than Rock and Austin. Yeah, well, it's bigger than the Rock and Austin in Seattle. Well, yeah, I guess so. Shinsuke Nakamura, Rick Boogs beat Los Lotharios. Boogs just destroyed him and uh, hit all of his big moves. Boogs, Cruz, his, his thing at the end of military pressing dudes and then curling them. I mean, that's yeah. going to get over. Oh, yeah. He's gonna, his, his, stuff, his stuff's going to get over, you know. I mean, and um, I mean, they, they have to protect him in short matches or tag matches. But if they do, you know, I mean, the stuff's gonna the stuff's gonna work because he's got he's very very strong and can do very very impressive things. And uh, yeah, we had uh, a segment backstage where Corbin wanted Moss to make a joke, and Moss made a joke about uh, about Happy. Uh, what the, hell's the name of his his show? Happy time, whatever. Anyway. Happy talk. Happy talk, that's right. Corbin was not happy with this joke. And they made sure you knew it by oh, yeah, yeah. They leaving really the te- camera on them for about nine minutes as they yeah. awkwardly looked at each other. They teased the idea that um, uh, Corbin, Jinder Mahal, and Shanky are going to turn on Moss at some point. Hey, this guy should go babyface. He's awesome. He's a new name. Yeah, and, and, and that, that, that the bad joke gimmick... The bad joke gimmick is not a good baby face gimmick. No. But as far as as far as he goes, um, he's he's now if he had know. good jokes and could bury the heels. I mean, you kind of yeah, got something there, but well, that's probably what they'll do. Yeah. The only problem is is that their idea of good jokes might be really bad jokes. That's true. We had uh, Drew and the Viking Raiders beating Jinder, Shanky, and Happy Corbin. Uh, went seven minutes and uh, mostly Drew uh, making his big comeback and. Pin an old shanky there, so I mean it was it was fine, nothing special. Sasha and Naomi versus Rhea Ripley and Liv Morgan. They actually were having a pretty damn good match, and uh, you'll never guess what happened. In ran uh, Natty and Shayna, stupid DQ. Fans beat booed like crazy. Up. Beat everyone up. Yeah, but I mean it was it, it got to where they're going. You know what I mean? Yeah, but it yeah. makes the whole Raw storyline with Seth being able to get on WrestleMania makes him look like an idiot. Just run into a match, dude. Run into the cha- run into a match involving uh, whoever, uh, some champion. And next thing you know, you're gonna be in a championship match at WrestleMania. Yeah, it's what are true. you sitting there sulking backstage? Okay, for, so, like so here's here's the thing. Now that now that we know that Natalia and Shane are in that match, last week really makes no sense. <laughs> well, <laughs> last week makes no sense most of the time when I watch these shows. 
Yeah, I mean, honest. I mean, if you're going to bring them in and put them in the match, I mean, don't. What did they? They squashed them in like three minutes last week. Like they were just like regular squash people. Other than the fact that like Zelina and Carmella kind of, you know, whatever. Oh, and all the other thing too is, is they make very clear that uh, Zelina is totally annoyed with Carmella. Yeah, that's what we need is a uh, a, a weak pair of champions that also uh, can't get along and are incompetent. Which probably means they're winning at WrestleMania, which I do not advocate for. Um, boy, of all the teams, I would say of the four teams in there, um, I, th- I would, I would say they're the weakest in certain ways. But yeah, I could see them winning. I could see them winning too. And we had uh, Johnny Knoxville accepting the challenge for the No Holds Barred match. Anything goes. Uh, Michael Cole alerts Pat McAfee, Mr. McMahon wants to see you in his office now. So Pat McAfee goes backstage, and then uh, they do about 50 random segments of commercials, and then they show Pat McAfee coming out of the office, and he goes down to the ring, and dude, this guy was born, he was born to be a wrestler. He cut a great promo. He's cutting this promo about growing up and watching wrestling for the first time when he was 11. And Michael Cole here called him and asked him if he wanted to be a commentator, and he said, hell yeah. And he's doing this great promo, and Austin Theory shows up, and uh, Austin's demanding the apology, which apparently Vince wants uh, uh, McAfee to give. And McAfee starts going nuts, saying, I, I'm sorry I beat your ass last week. I'm sorry I made you look like a punk. I'm sorry for your stupid face. They get in each other's faces, and uh, uh, McAfee shoves him, runs for his life. Pat McAfee was awesome in this segment. He was great. Yeah, They're I actually doing that. a hell of a job with this uh, this feud. Pat McAfee's really good at this. I mean, Dude, you know, he's unbelievable. His match with Cole, which, by the way, like, uh, you know, I don't want to say they didn't rehearse any of that match. But they worked at like a match. Like Adam Cole went in there, and he called that match with McAfee. So for you guys that saw that match, and McAfee did so great in that match, that wasn't like something where like they memorized it move for move. I mean, they worked a match, and he was great, and his promos are great, and he's got instincts. This guy's awesome. He's got instincts. He's very good at um, understanding how to play a pro wrestler really good at it i mean i don't mean that in a bad way like sometimes oh he's playing pro wrestler no i mean he understands how to do it the right way you know some people that are celebrities that are out there trying to play pro wrestler it's very clear that they are playing pro wrestler like he understands how to play pro wrestler and make it look you know have the respect for pro wrestling to look legit which a lot of people don't really like, if they're not in pro wrestling, don't seem to understand that. Like Johnny Knoxville, for example, who's clearly playing pro wrestler, you know, whereas Pat McAfee is is not. Um, well, there's, there's, there's guys who are, like, diehard fans who have been fans forever. And but so, it, depends, it depends on the kind of fan you are, though. Some people are fans. You know, there are people who are fans that don't get the first thing about no, no, pro no. wrestling. But my point is, if you've been, like, a long longtime fan and you get it, then when it's your opportunity to do it, you are essentially playing pro wrestler, but you know what you're doing when you play this role. As opposed to somebody who maybe he's watched a little wrestling here and there, he's got some wrestler friends, maybe he watches a pay-per-view here or there. His idea of how to play a pro wrestler is going to be totally different. And that's, that's I think, the difference between, you know, McAfee and, uh, and Knoxville. And a lot of guys. I don't think Knoxville's doing a lot of reading of The Observer. <laughs> Probably not. That's... You know, I mean, I guess that there's something to some of that, but um, I mean, the thing is, is like he's been like, look, look, he's a trained pro wrestler. He just hasn't done many matches. I mean, he's trained for years for, for, for pro wrestling and he trained under Rip Rogers, who's old school, you know what I mean? And, you know, personalized lessons and things like that. So um and then the other part, you know, and he's a good he's a good athlete. And he's a, he's a great personality. He's a fantastic personality. So you know, he's got the key stuff. By the way, I don't know if there's ever. Been, this is one of the greatest matches with the sound off that I have ever seen. 
I don't know if it's actually a good match or not, but I've watched a lot of matches with no sound and just like watching people do moves and, and stuff. And this match is unreal. Ridge Holland and Kofi Kingston. Uh, the story here, obviously, is that Ridge Holland broke Big E's neck and they showed videos and they showed updates from Big E. And uh, Ridge Holland went in there and they actually redid the finish from last week where uh, Ridge Holland gets distracted because his guys get ejected. He gets rolled up by Kofi, but he kicks out. And then, uh, so they actually didn't, comp- I mean, they did the same deal, but this time the guy kicked out. And then finally, uh, uh, there's another distraction and Holland ends up hitting his finish. Pins Kofi Kingston. So uh, they did, by the way, uh, during this match on commentary, say that uh, Ridge Holland had apologized for what happened to Big E, said he felt horrible about it, said that Big E was like a great wrestler, and he hoped to face him again someday. So it's very interesting they did that, because obviously Ridge Holland's supposed to be like a diabolical heel, but, uh, you know, they they told us how sorry the guy was for what happened in real life. I'm sure he is sorry. I'm sure I'm also, he's very I, sorry. I will say I'm really surprised they did that on television, though. They did. They did. Yeah, it was I don't very know if that's interesting. A, it is interesting. I mean, on, I, in theory, I think it's a terrible idea, but I guess we'll have to see how it plays out. I but, mean, it may have been a deal where he was like, dude, I do, not, I do not want this made into some sort of angle where I meant to break his neck and I'm rejoicing about it. Because, dude, be everyone that. loves Big E. Yeah, yeah. So. Yeah. Well, that's that's true. That's true. Um but other people would say he's afraid to get heat. But you, there's other ways to do it. Like, you know, like you could apologize on social media, but not on the television show. You know what I mean? And and I, I would say if he apologized on social media, I would say that's cool. But on the television show, I just don't think that's the, the, the venue for it. Oh, my God. This match is unreal. I don't even know. They're, they're one, two. This is like got some of the greatest ground wrestling you'll ever see and some incredible near falls oh my god main event was charlotte and ronda rousey's segment which was basically charlotte coming down to the ring and they ultimately got into a another brawl and they're on the outside and ronda tries to put her in the ankle lock but charlotte ends up grabbing a kendo stick she starts whacking her with the kendo stick and then she uh, puts her in what well, they're calling like her new finish, which is you know some sort of of you know choke or whatever. That it was she, like the camel clutch. The, the same thing? one she did on the hood of the car. It's like a yeah, yeah it was camel kind clutch. Of a camel clutch. Like yeah, yeah. But uh, they're, they're making a big deal about the fact that Ronda absolutely will not tap to this move. So Charlotte's doing this move with a stick, and she still won't give up. So Charlotte lets go, picks her up, power bombs her through the announce table. Leaves her for dead. So that's two weeks in a row she's left her for dead. So I'm thinking she probably is not walking out of WrestleMania with that belt. Well, I mean, Ronda should win, Yeah. right? I mean, that should be what the finish is. I would say so. Yeah. I mean, they're they're in the main event on the first night. You would put the baby face over. Yeah. Hey, if you're a big fan of Wrestling Observer Radio... We got 12,000 episodes of all of our podcasts up at our website, WrestlingObserver.com. If you sign up today, you get access to every single one of them. The 12 to 18 new shows that we do every single week. You can podcast them, listen to them on the road, at work, working out, in the shower, wherever you listen to your podcasts. And also full access to the Wrestling Observer newsletter and archives. So if you love what you hear, head to WrestlingObserver.com. 12,000 Audio shows at your fingertips.